In this video, we're going to learn how to trigger an action after a certain amount of time. This is extremely useful for testing your game and creating timed events, like for example when making a cutscene. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. So here we will cover how the function timer works. It's a simple but very useful class for triggering an action after some time. This is one of the classes that is part of the CodeMonkey utilities which you can grab for free from UnityCodeMonkey.com. This is very useful for easily setting up timers in your code. So here for example I have a scene with a little cutscene set up. Cutscenes are one of the scenarios where timed events are really important so it's perfect to demonstrate this use. So in here, when I press space, the unit will walk, it will stop, show some cinematic bars, zoom in, and then go back to normal. So let's see, hit space, there it is, moving, zoom in, show the cinematic, and move away. Okay, great. So that's one example of how it can be useful, so let's check out the code. Here is the code that makes all of those events happen one after the other. It might seem complicated, but it's actually very simple. As you can see, each of them is just one different function call. The function call triggers a certain action after a certain amount of time. So for example here on the last one you can see that after 3 seconds we are triggering an action which hides the cinematic bars. So now that we know the benefits and one of the uses for the function timer, let's recreate it to see how it works. So first in here let's make a new C-sharp script and we're going to call this the function timer. Essentially we trigger a function after some time. I want this to be a simple class and to be able to use the constructor, so let's first remove the model behavior to make this the simplest class it can be. Now let's make the constructor a public function timer. Now in here, to trigger an action after some time, let's receive an action which is inside the using system namespace. An action, in case you don't know, it's a very simple delegate that takes no parameters and returns a void. So it's essentially the same as in here, private void, my action, this would be a valid function that could be passed on into that action. So we need an action and then we're also going to need a float for the timer. Now let's sort them as variables. And now let's make a function that we will run on update. So make a simple public void update. In here, we're going to count down the timer using time.deltaTime. And we just do a simple test. If the timer is under zero, then we trigger the action. Again, the action is essentially just a stored function. So in order to trigger it, we simply call action and execute it as if it were a function. All right, so that's very simple and it should be working. So now let's figure out a way to test it. Let's create a new script for testing, so make a new c -sharp script and let's call this testing. And let's also drag it onto a game object that we're going to name testing and drag the testing script onto it. Okay, so we now have this script running with mono behavior. Now here we can do our tests on this start. So we need to create a function timer, so we do a new function timer create a new instance of our class. And now in here we pass in the action that we want to trigger. So let's make a private void testing action. And inside let's do a debug.log saying testing. And now we can pass in this function as our action. And we're going to trigger it after three seconds. Okay, so after three seconds this function will be called which will do a debug.log. Now we still need to call the update function on this function timer, so let's store this. And now since this class is running with a model behavior, we have access to the private void update, and we can call the function timer dot update. Okay, so we are creating our testing timer, passing in the testing action and three seconds. Then on every update, we're calling the update on the function timer, and once those three seconds are passed, it will trigger this function, which will do a debug.log. So let's see that. Okay, here's the scene. After three seconds, you should see in the console. Yep, there it is. Okay, great. 
So it worked and it is indeed triggering the action after three seconds. However, as you can see, we also have a problem since it's triggering that action over and over again instead of doing it only once as it is intended. So let's go back into our function timer and here let's create a function to destroy this function timer. So let's call this the private void destroy self. We're going to destroy this function timer after triggering the action. And in order to destroy this object, let's simply set a simple boolean. So we do a private bool is destroyed. By default, we are not destroyed. And when we do destroy self, we set it to true. And here we only run this code if we are not destroyed. Okay, that should do it for making sure that our action is only triggered once. So let's see. Here we are, and after three seconds, and yep, there you go, as you can see, exactly only once. Okay, great. So we can now trigger an action after a certain amount of time. So the code is all working, but the setup is pretty clunky. And here, as you can see on our testing, we need to first create the object, then we need to keep a reference to it, and we need to call it on update. Let's make the function timer class handle all of that to make it very easy to use. So back in the function timer code, we need to call this update function from somewhere in here. Now we could make this class extend mono behavior, but that would make this class more complicated and be tightly coupled with the mono behavior system. So another approach is to keep this as a simple class and then have another simple class that hooks into the mono behavior functions. So let's make a class inside this class. We're going to do a public class. Let's call it the mono behavior hook. And this one will indeed extend mono behavior. So this class will essentially hook into the mono behavior system, which means that in here we have access to the private void update. So here we can store a action for the on update action and we simply trigger it on update. And just like that, we can pass in whatever function we want into this on update, and it will be called on update. So to make this class easy to use, let's make a static create function. So in here we do a public static. We're going to return a function timer, and let's call this create. And in here we're going to receive an action and a float for our timer. And in doing so, we're also going to make the constructor private to make sure this constructor is only called from inside this class. And now in here, essentially, we take care of everything we were doing on our testing. So first we create the function timer. Then we create a game object. We create the object with the name function timer and we start off with the mono behavior hook component. Then we get that mono behavior hook component, get component. And we set the on update function to trigger the function timer dot update. So with that, everything should be working and it's all contained here inside this one class. So to see the benefits of doing all of this, let's go back into our testing. And this is what we were previously doing. We were holding the reference, creating an instance and calling update. And now we don't need to do any of this. We just need to call the function timer, call the create function, pass in the action and the time. And just like that, everything will work. So we can get rid of this, this, and all of this. So as you can see, we got rid of all of that. We made it just one line, very simple, and it's all taken care of inside the function timer. So let's test and see if everything is still working exactly as intended. Here's the scene and after three seconds, yep, there you go, there's our testing and as you can see, our function timer game object was indeed created. All right, so everything is working perfectly fine. However, the one issue that you see is that even though the timer has elapsed and it triggered the action, this game object is still in here. That is a potential garbage problem, so we need to make sure that we clean it up when the action is triggered. So let's go into the function timer. And here on our constructor, let's receive an action, a timer, and then also a game object. And now we can go into our destroy self function. And in here, we also destroy our game object. 
So just like that, when we call destroy self, it will destroy the game object, and this is called after triggering our action. So we should be able to see the game object exist whilst the timer is active. As soon as it's over, the game object should be cleaned up and everything perfectly fine. Let's see. We just need to also pass in the object. So let's go up here. First, we create the game object. Then we pass in that game object into our function timer. And then we hook onto the mono behavior update with our function timer update. Now let's test. Okay, here we are waiting and there's the game object. And yep, there you go, the game object was destroyed and the action was triggered. Great, so everything is working. Now, sometimes you might want to set up a timer to do something like play an animation, but you want to cancel it if something else happens. So let's see how we can cancel active timers. For that, really the only thing we need is to have a list of all our active timers. So for that, let's make a static list. So in here, we make a private static list of function timers. This will be our active timer list. Now we need to initialize this list. So again, let's make sure everything is contained inside this class. So for that, let's make a private static void in it if needed. So this function will deal with the initialization of everything that this class requires. Since our function timers use game objects, we can use that to make sure if our game objects are still alive or if they have been destroyed. So for that, we can use a private static, hold an instance to a game object. Let's call this the init game object. And here we can use that game object to test if the scene has been reloaded. So we do a test. If that game object is null, then it means this class is running for the very first time or there has been a level load, which does necessitate resetting our timers. So in here we create the game object and we can also initialize our list. So active timer list equals a new list. Okay, so just like this, we will make sure that our list is always reinitialized every time the scene changes. Our timers aren't meant to go beyond the current scene, so this is exactly the behavior we want. So now that we have the list set up, in here when we create a new function timer, all we need to do is add it to our list. So we go into the active timer list and we add our new function timer. Now to make sure that this does not give a null reference exception, we're going to call in it if needed when creating a function timer. So if it is necessary, it will initialize the list. If it's already initialized, then it doesn't do anything. So when we create, we add it to the list. Let's also make a function to remove it from the list. So a private static void, remove timer. And here we call in it if needed to make sure that the list exists. And we go into the active timer list and remove our timer. Okay, so we have our list correctly adding and removing. Now let's call the remove timer when we destroy this actual timer. So we call remove timer on this. And just like that, we now have our list that always contains only the active timers. So with that, we can now decide to stop a certain timer. So let's make here a function, a private static void. Let's call this stop timer. And now in here, we need some way of identifying a timer. So for that, let's use a string for the name. So that also means that we need to initialize a function timer and also give it a name. So on the create function in here, let's add a potential string value for the timer name. We want this to be just an optional parameter since most cases you probably won't need to use it. So by default, let's set it to null. We're going to pass in the timer name to our function timer. So in here we receive a string for the timer name. So now this object also has a timer name. So now in here on the stop timer, all we need to do is cycle through the timer list. And if the active timer list on this index dot timer name equals the timer name that we want to stop, then we want to stop this timer. 
So here in order to stop the timer, we simply go into the active timer list of this index and we call destroy self. That won't stop the timer and remove it from the active timer list. And then since we are cycling through that list, we need to go back on the index so we make sure we don't skip one. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So now let's go to our testing class to test if all of this is working. So let's make two testing actions. And first let's call the testing action and then one second later, let's call the testing action two. So first let's see if both of these run exactly as intended, one after three seconds and one after four seconds. Here we are and after three seconds and yep, there's the testing and yep, there's the testing too. Okay, so we have both timers working. Now let's give them names. So this is the first timer and this is the timer two. So let's say we started off both of these timers, but then we wanted to cancel the first timer. So we go into the function timer and we call the stop timer function. We pass in the timer name that we wish to stop and let's stop the first timer. Okay, so we are creating the first timer, then the second timer, and then we stop the first timer. So the only one that should still be triggered is the second timer. Let's see. Okay, here we are and... Yep, there you go, only the second timer was actually triggered. The first timer didn't happen at all. So that means that we can trigger an action after some time or cancel a currently active timer. So that's pretty much it for the function timer class. As you can see, we have just one entry point. It's extremely simple. And in using it, all we need to do is call the function timer and call the create function. And we can now trigger an action after some time. And if needed, we can also stop it. So we can now look into the class that is included in the utilities. So here is the class that is included in the utilities. As you can see, it's called function timer. We still have the same mono behavior hook. We have a list of our timers and a game object used for initializing the class. We have our initializing function and various function calls to pass in timer, no timer, function time. We also have a couple more extra features like for example, use unscaled delta time or the normal delta time and an option to stop all with the same name. So with the understanding of what we created in this video, you should be able to understand all of the code in here and how all of this works. So that's pretty much it. And here is the example scene that I showed earlier. As you can see, the function calls are very simple and should now be easy to understand. We call the create function on the function timer. We pass in the action. This action, for example, is telling the character to move to a target position and it will execute after hundred milliseconds. So 0.1 seconds. Then after 0.9 seconds, we are going to move the camera. After 0.9 seconds, we also zoom in and we also show the cinematic bars. So as you can see, with just these few lines of codes, we can create a very nice complex cutscene. So anytime you need to trigger an action after a certain amount of time, all it takes is one simple line of code. So there you have it. We recreated the function timer from the utilities in order to understand how it works. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time.